Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This topic is related to medical surgical nursing. The topic is blepharitis, which is infection and inflammation of eyelid. Introduction to blepharitis is infection and inflammation of eyelid margins characterized by dry eyes and acne rosacea. Blepharitis is seen yearly in 15 to 25% of the Indian population, often associated with other ocular disease. Here, acne rosacea is appearance of a kind of acne in the eyelid margin, at the eyelid margin. Also, there is dry eyes. There is imbalanced production of fluid inside the eye, which causes the eyes to be dry. Diagram for blepharitis looks something like this. Uh, there is a characteristic feature of blepharitis that includes crusting at the base of eyelashes. The eyelashes is connected with or surrounded with a crusting like a crystal like a structure that sticks one eyelash with another. So that happens in blepharitis. Types of blepharitis can be anterior and posterior according to the anatomical location of sign and symptoms. Anterior blepharitis is caused mainly due to bacteria and parasite, bacteria like Staphylococcus and parasite like Phreatus. Where posterior blepharitis can be due to, can be occurred due to defect in meibomian gland and presence of dandruff inside the eye. The meibomian gland when is disturbed in its structure or a function production that can cause blepharitis and when there is a presence of dandruff inside the eye or seborrhea that can also lead to blepharitis. Moving ahead, etiology of blepharitis was pretty much clear from the types. It is bacteria, parasite, meibomian gland dysfunction and dandruff related etiology that is seborrhea. Pathophysiology for blepharitis can be first of all etiological factors creates a risk to the eye, bacteria, parasite that leads to infection of eyelid. This is the beginning of infection of eyelid. This infection can evoke reaction to staphylococcal exotoxin. So the infection created inside the eye releases toxins that has an allergic response. Body responds in such a way which symptoms like allergic in the outside the body or outside of the eye. Patient feels like itching in the eye or burning sensation in the eye. This leads to conjunctival hyperemia, excess blood supply to the conjunctiva, which might create redness in the eye or conjunctiva. Clinical features can be, first of all, hard scaly crushes present around the lashes. This was shown in the diagram, hard scaly crushes present around the eyelashes, both the upper and lower eyelid eyelashes. After that, another feature can be burning grittiness and mild photophobia, burning sensation because of the allergic response of grittiness. Foreign body might mild foreign body sensation and then also mild photophobia. Conjunctival hyperemia is also associated with mild papillary conjunctivitis as there is excess blood supply, redness, inflammation, infection near the conjunctiva. So there can be an appearance of mild papillary conjunctivitis. The symptoms of blepharitis can be worse in morning as there is stickiness in the eyelid in early morning. The patient might have difficulty in opening the eye. So, symptoms are usually worsened in the morning. Other symptoms can be, first of all, scarring because of friction. Friction, when two surfaces rub against each other abnormally, there can be scarring. Notching of lead margin, that is stylosis. Lead margin can, uh, can suffer from notching. Trichiasis, 
there can be misdirected eye lashes anatomically madarosis there can be loss of few lashes polyosis there can be loss of pigmentation of the lashes every eye lashes have their pigmentation which is related to their growth so there is loss of pigmentation of eye lashes also there can be sty formation because the fluid are misdirected here and there and they are deposited at some part of the eyelid so that can result in sty formation diagnostic test can be first of all history taking as allergic response have been considered as the one of the most important feature we should obtain the history of smoking and history of allergy smoking and allergy both can aggravate this disease condition on physical examination we can do inspection of eye for inflammation and discharge also we can palpate the eyelids to find out severity of its inflammation next is slit lamp examination for microscopic view of each organ inside the eye each ocular organ general management can be first of all hygiene maintenance body hygiene eye cleaning with cold and clean water the water actually should not be too much hot or too much cold normal temperature water bedding should be changed daily because the infection can be retransmitted to the body if the same bedding or same clothing is used patient should consume high fiber diet in order to avoid a constipation because uh, during constipation there is a straining while defecation which increases or aggravates the pain there should be delousing of scalp lousing and dandruff presence in the air is due to some fungal infection dandruff is a more like a allergic reaction to that fungus but presence of louse can aggravate this kind of ocular infection if that louse during at any time night time or day time tries to enter the eye that can aggravate the infection so delousing of the scalp should be done avoid rubbing of eye to avoid the friction there is already uh, presence of scales there is already presence or presence of sticky particles in the eyelashes again if we rub the eye then because of friction all the symptoms can be aggravated medical management can be for bacterial we have antibiotic ointment known as erythromycin if we want to reduce the inflammation medically ibuprofen can be used but if there is no uh, severe inflammation or severe pain this can be managed without taking ibuprofen for seborrheic seborrhea of scalp should be treated that means the dandruff of the scalp should be treated any kind of antifungal medicine can be used also hygiene should be maintained for seborrhea for parasitic infection antibiotic ointment should be applied to the eyelashes antibiotic ointment rub should be done around the eyes and then the organism should be mechanically removed by using a small sized forceps neat first of all antibiotic ointment should be rubbed around the eye and then the organism the parasite can be mechanically removed if we try to move remove the organism without uh, without rubbing with an antibiotic ointment then due to dryness we might pluck out the eyelashes so antibiotic ointment rub is in order to relax the ocular muscle and relax the eyelashes also mebomitis can be treated by vertical lid massage eye lid can be massaged vertically so that if there is any extra fluid any drainage that can be vertically poured out of the eye outside of the eye also antibiotic eye drops can be used tetracycline ointment a drop or oral form of tetracycline can also be used important part about mebomitis management is vertical lid massage i should be massaged vertically towards outside so that any extra fluid or particle present inside the eye can be removed towards outside
complications for this disease can be first of all epiphora presence of excess fluid and passing out of excess fluid out of the eye from especially upper part next is eczema skin infection around the eye ectopian outward movement of the eye if it would be intropian it would be inward movement of the eyelid it is ectropian so outward movement of the eyelid one of the complication and then recurrent style because of infection there can be growth of microorganism again and again if the antibiotic cycle antibiotic dose is not completed recurrent style can be formed also keratitis inflammation of cornea can be one of the complication thank you so much next disease condition will be explained in next video